people have noticed I'm using this little orange amplifier when I'm doing audio related projects, and it's really a small novelty version of a full-sized guitar amplifier. I've been asked, how does it really sound for a guitar? Can you get good sustain and interesting harmonics if you use the guitar up against it for feedback? And is there a way to use an external speaker to help improve things at all? So I thought I would take a look inside this amplifier, see what's actually in there, and do a modification, put an external speaker jack, and see if I can get any feedback one way or the other. This amplifier is relatively straightforward. It's got a volume, tone control, and it can do clean or overdrive sounds, and it has a built-in guitar tuner. It can run on a 9-volt battery, or you can plug in a 9-volt power supply. There's a headphone out jack, and it says it's a 3-watt amplifier. So let's take this thing apart and see what's in there, see if we can make our modification. The circuit board has through-hole components. We have two dual op amps, TL072, and it looks like we have a power amplifier TBA820. And there's a little PCB that's mounted vertically, but it's soldered in with a header. But I'm going to say that's the guitar tuner because it looks like it connects up to all those tuner LEDs. Speaker cabinets are quarter inch mono phone plugs. So I'm going to use these mono switched phone jacks. And this kind of switched mono jack has three terminals. There's tip for the end of the plug, sleeve for the ground sleeve, and then there's this middle terminal which is the switched portion. So before we install this jack, normally the amplifier inside the box connects straight to the internal speaker. But if we break that circuit and we put the internal amplifier's output to this tip, then the internal speaker goes to this middle connection. With nothing plugged in, the amplifier output is still connected straight to the internal speaker as normal. But if we plug in an external speaker cabinet, this tip contact springs away, makes contact with this plug tip, and breaks contact with this internal speaker terminal. So now the amplifier output goes only to this external speaker cabinet. And that's how we can just have the one jack, and it automatically switches between internal or external speaker. Looking up the datasheet for that TBA820 amplifier that we saw, this is 1.2 watts although the back of the amplifier said it was 3 watts. The output power, when we are running on 9 volts, and the speaker is 8 ohms, we get about 1.2 watts. So I tried looking around. I found on a forum back in 2017 there was a discussion. Somebody got one of these amps, 3 watt RMS rated power. They opened it up and saw that same chip I've got, and yeah, it's about 1 watt max. And there's reference to someone else who previously opened his, and it actually has a different amplifier, TDA7267. So when I look up this, this one's, it's still only saying 2 watts, but it's more. So the output power here can be typically 2 watts, but this is when the supply voltage is 12 volts. What do you get when you're only using it at 9? There's really no graphs here to try and figure that out. And it looks like they lowered the wattage but kept the same label on the back. Aside from that, I was looking for some info. Is there a schematic or something? And all I could find is something way back from 2010. There was a forum post referencing a blog post containing some hand-drawn transcribed schematics. So if I just kind of look at this, I think there's some incomplete things and maybe some mistakes here from reading the forum. For example, we have R23 and D1 here, here, and here, and also this right here. This network looks like this. I think it's just duplicated up here for maybe convenience, and this right here looks kind of like this right here. So this kind of star connects here, this asterisk goes here sort of thing, but I don't know. I'm just going to use this as a block diagram and referencing what I read in the blog post. The power amp chip, which everyone's being used, isn't on this schematic. It kind of goes from here to the input of the actual power amp chip. And the power amp circuit, they say, is like the data sheet. So on this old chip, maybe the circuit looks as simple as this. Otherwise, let's just take a block diagram sort of high-level look at this. We have our 9-volt battery. 
reverse polarity and some bulk capacitance here for the power supply for the board, 9 volts. Audio comes in, DC blocking, so we take away any offset and we just have our AC audio. A little bit of filtering, then we have a voltage divider from VCC to ground, and that re-biases our audio signal at 4.5 volts going into an op amp. So this has negative feedback, it's going to have some gain, and maybe frequency dependent with these RC networks. And this would be for the clean channel. This network here, where it connects up to this switch, that can change the characteristics of this amp. So this is clean or overdrive mode. So when the switch is in overdrive position, this network here gets connected to ground, and that basically bypasses this one meg resistor to ground, changes the gain characteristics. But for now, let's say we're in clean mode. The audio at this point has three paths it can take. So let's get this part out of the way. This is just some signal conditioning and further buffering, and it goes to the tuner module. So it probably just cleans it up, maybe scales it to the proper voltage levels, help get a cleaner signal in there. So we'll ignore this. When the clean and overdrive switches in clean mode, this path right here comes right here. And in clean mode, that signal is connected to this tone circuit. So this is a little passive filter that controls whether you're cutting highs or lows. And that goes on to the power amp. So that's your clean circuit path. If we are in overdrive mode, this extra op amp here with again some gain and maybe some filtering at certain frequencies and some diode clipping, that will get sent out to this tone circuit and off to the power amp. So that's basically it. Some op amps, RC filter networks, and a power amp chip with this extra tuner. Now that I've got the external speaker jack and everything's put together, I'm going to use this speaker cabinet. I'm only using the top speaker. Let's do a little test with the internal speaker, then connect the external speaker and compare if it sounds any different and how the feedback coming out of the speaker sounds when we put the guitar up against it. We're not going to do anything fancy, just a quick test, mostly to see is there any immediate difference in the internal and external speaker, and can we get any feedback out of the speaker at all with the internal, and can we get anything any better with the external. To me it sounds better with the external speaker and it's also louder in person, and it sounds like we can maybe coax some better sounds out of it using a better external speaker. So this was a worthwhile experiment. Hopefully you found it interesting. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Consider subscribing if you'd like to see more content like this, and I'll see you on the next video.